Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss the yearly portfolio performance of my personal account, and we are going to compare it with that of the previous years. Uh, that's 2024 and also 2023, which I have uploaded in the previous videos. Uh, we are going to discuss the traits of my personal portfolio. I also have a company account, but I will not be uh, discussing that purely from a cybersecurity reasons. And also it's a bigger fund size. Um, and also it goes through lots of scrutiny, so it's better to keep it safe. So I'll only be sharing my personal account and there's two brokerage accounts uh, with it. We'll discuss everything. We'll discuss the investment or trading approach and we'll also discuss the taxes and different fees that I pay, uh, the brokerages, commissions and all those things. Um, and also dividends of uh, different stocks and all those things, and how much I received. Uh, so you get a general idea on how my yearly performance is. Uh, so as far as the video is concerned, uh, with regards to the expectations, um, this is just purely my personal uh, performance. This should never be taken as financial advice or you shouldn't approach it in that specific way. I come from a very good uh, STEM background and I've also got a master's in risk management and financial engineering and I've worked in prop firms and have my own quant fund and work as consultant to quant firms and everything. So uh, everything that you do from watching this video should purely come from your own ideas and skills. You can pick up certain things and learn from it and everything, but take it with a, a pinch of salt. Every single strategy uh, is always a work in progress. As years go by, I learn lots of things and I add uh, things to it. I, I don't trade the same way I trade during my 20s now since I'm mid 30s. So no strategy is bulletproof and do not take this video and whatever positions that I've got as financial advice. Um, so what I do with my strategy is basically I use quantitative trading and machine learning and AI to improve an existing good strategy. So for example, if I'm using value investing, I can use ML or AI to improve the allocations for it, or uh, I can use ML or AI to actually get a better entry or a better exit. Uh, I can get a good list of stocks based on the liquidity, and also I can find undervalued stocks. Uh, so these are some of the reasons how, these are some of the ways how I use machine learning or AI. So some people, they just use machine learning or AI just blindly, and that's the worst way to approach it. It is kind of like a tool to improve an existing good strategy. So if you have like a good strategy and you need to improve the CAGR to draw down, then that's when you put in the ML or AI. It's always to improve something. It can also be used as an allocation. So for example, if I feel the machine learning model is telling me that I can get a much better risk reward metric uh, in Microsoft, allocating more in Microsoft, then that will be one of the approaches. Or maybe I need to put less in, say for example, a Tesla. So there's a wide variety of approaches you could have uh, when you are applying machine learning or AI. So uh, it depends on your personal style and personal approach to it. So I have my own personal ways and this is the approach that I generally do. So I have a decision tree or a neural network for entries and exit. So I've discussed it thoroughly in many of the videos. So this is a decision tree breakout here. Uh, I think MACD is also a decision tree breakout. Uh, I've discussed decision tree thoroughly in this video. If you don't know anything about decision tree, we we'll also discuss neural networks trading as well. Uh, so this is where I kind of figure out my entries and exit. And then in order to allocate the fund, like I said before, how much should be allocated for a certain amount of stocks and everything, which you will see when you will see my positions. Um, that's when I use a long short term memory. And then a rebalancing, which is more from a personal approach. Um, it's basically happens in market corrections. Um, and periodically. So this this year, I've kind of missed a big allocation uh, during the market correction in um, April, but last year I did quite well. Uh, so different different approaches for rebalancing. Um, and then there is the kill switch or a circuit breaker, which is basically a regime filter. For that, I do a support vector machine. Um, so when we had the down drawdown uh, in April, S&P 500 had a bigger drawdown. I think it had like a 12% drawdown or something like that. I'm not, I'm not roughly sure, but my portfolio didn't have that much of a worse drawdown. And that's because there is a kill switch or a circuit breaker to reduce the fund size as well. Uh, I also have trend following or momentum and mean reverting strategy. So most of these whole entries and exit is based on the trend following momentum and mean reverting strategy. So you will see in my positions, a few smaller positions, which are kind of like mean reverting. Uh, which you will see the market has gone down, the stock has gone down kind of harshly, and then I'm entering. And then there's a trend following momentum, which is kind of like long term, and the market's keeping on going up. Uh, so this is overall my fundamental trading approach. And in order to facilitate it, I have multiple brokerage accounts. So whether it be a company account, 
uh, or a personal account. I have normally two uh, brokerage accounts. So one is the Interactive Brokers account, the other is a local bank. And same thing goes for the company account, there's Interactive Brokers account and a local bank. So the reason why there is a local bank is that the transfer money can be fast. Uh, interactive brokers, I have to transfer from here because I live in Dubai for tax reasons because it has got tax haven advantages. So I need to transfer the money from here to Dubai, I mean from Dubai to United States of America and that takes time and withdrawal also take time. So sometimes you, the market is going through some volatile movements and you need some uh, some money in to invest. So in those kind of situations, a local bank is a way to go. But uh, local banks issue is that they generally come with extreme high commissions, which you will see when you see their statements. Um, interactive brokers, on the other hand, is lower commissions. Uh, so short trades, normally I only do it on index ETFs, S&P 500 ETFs and NASDAQ, but that I strictly do it in company account because I've got a, a larger account size in that. So shorter trades, I've got margin. Uh, so it's much more better to do it in the company account and personal account. I normally don't uh, do uh, short trades, but you will see leaps in there, which you will see in my personal account. Uh, you'll see the leaps on the SPY, which was unsuccessful. And there's also a current leap in Amazon, which is on play as well. Uh, so as far as leverage is concerned, I do minimalistic leverage. I am mid thirties and I'm really careful in protecting my money. Maybe in my early twenties, I might be slightly aggressive, but even then I don't recommend leverage at all. And I feel like this is one of the biggest flaws that retail traders have. They want to leverage a lot and they will see probably 100% return or something which is spectacular than mine. But uh, I don't think they will last that long because it is a double-edged sword. Some years you might do well, some years it's going to wipe out your portfolio. So for me, I need to sleep well at night. I need some time, some money to be taken from my account, use it for personal use, uh, maybe for travel and things like that. So uh, leverage, I keep it minimal. I think at the moment my leverage is like 0.4 or something. It's not even one is to one, like two is to one leverage. It's like very tiny. A very tiny amount of leverage you'll see again in the financial statement. So um, that's roughly the whole idea about my strategies and how I approach this. Uh, so company account has always their own tax benefits as compared to personal account. So for example, if you are in Dubai and you create a proprietary trading uh, fund or a family office or a hedge fund, the advantage being that there is no income tax or capital gains tax. You will, however, have tax on the dividends and that will be deducted from the source. So you will only get the money uh, after the tax has been deducted, which again, you will see in the financial statements. Uh, so the whole advantage of the company account is like, you could actually uh, put all your expenses in there. So for example, if you're traveling, uh, maybe on a holiday or traveling home or traveling to some other country, you can put that as a company expense. You can use food as a company expense. There are lots of uh, benefits of having a company account as compared to a personal account. So the profit and loss is after the, the taxes on the company is after the profit and loss is calculated as compared to a personal account. You're getting the money and then you're spending on it. Uh, and the company account has other advantages. Like for example, you can buy your... Uh, house in the name of the company you can also buy you can also rent an apartment in the name of a company for a, because you are the employee as well so there's there's tremendous advantage in company account it doesn't matter which country you're living in whether it's a tax haven country uh, or whether you are in a um, country where there is high amount of taxes so uh, in dubai when you have a proprietary trading fund or a hedge fund or a family office you essentially have a visa and you can live in dubai you don't have to live here all the time you can actually travel all around the world but you can trade uh, using your company account or create a personal account as well. So you can do you can do both of those things. Uh, so that's about the company tax benefits. So now let's go into the portfolio performance. Uh, so this is the portfolio performance for this year as of October 22nd. So that's one year return of 23.59%. Um, so the S&P 500 one year performance as of the same date is roughly 15.08. So it's not been that spectacular but it's been good enough. Uh, the previous year, 2024, 2023 has been much superior. So let's go through the 2024 and 2023, which I posted here. So if I can go through that video there, this is for 2024, which again, I did like a proper, um, proper study on what the returns for that year. It was 44.49%. That was in one brokerage account. And in the other brokerage account, it was, the second personal, both of them are personal. Uh, that was 
that was 27%. So you can check that video out. So that was like 44% in brokerage account one and brokerage account two, it was 27%. Um, so that was 2024. Now let's see 2023, which is in this video. So that year it was 52% and that was uh, December 29, 2023, the entirety of 2023. So 2023 was 52, um, uh, 2024 it was 27 and 44 something. Um, and as of now, it's uh, it keeps on changing because the market's about to open, 23.60. Uh, okay, so now let's go into the performance and reports. So if you can go to performance and report, so we can go deeper into some of the trades that I did and also discuss the um, fees and all those things. If we can go to month to month summary and then custom date range. So we'll do from 2024. So it's apples to apples, 2024, October, yeah. October 21st, 2024 from day two. 2025 October. Okay, so we'll just view the statement. Okay, so let's see the positions and mark to market. So you can actually compare this one with the video that I did uh, last year. So you can actually see the statements uh, and the things that I got in and got out as well. So uh, you'll get a better idea. Um, so here are some of the trades. Some of the trades are still on. So you can see that in the current section and then you can also see the prior section. For example, Apple, I'm out. Uh, but then there are many positions I'm still on like uh, booking, um, grab. So for example, Alphabet, I am zero, but you will see in my other account, my other personal account, there's like a big position in Google. Uh, some of the profits here, Nvidia, um, Meta platforms, all those things. Uh, and here is the leap options that I have done. So this is the S&P 500 leap option, which I did like, I think a couple of, a uh, couple of months ago, no, a couple of weeks ago, I think. And it was a loss and I had to take that out. Uh, Amazon leap, I'm still on. Uh, I will show you that position. Uh, it'll much more better in the uh, interactive brokers mobile platform than this uh, web platform. So that position I'm still on, that's for the December 2027 to 2300 uh, leap calls. It's a bull call spread. <clears throat> and then uh, let's see some of the fees that I pay. These are some of the fees that I pay for interactive brokers, uh, the streaming bundle, snapshots, and all those things. Uh, I paid, I think, 174 this year. And then let's see the uh, deposits and withdrawals. So this year I haven't um, transferred much money. I've only put in much money in the personal account just three times, but in the company account I put more. Um, Dividends, uh, as you can see, there are dividends from different companies that I invested from ASML. And here's something cool that I'll, I'll show you too. So, so this ASML, uh, MSF, uh, Microsoft and all those things. So if you go to the withholding tax, so you can see the US tax, and you can also see the Netherlands tax of uh, ASML here. Again, ASML, another tax withhold. So these are some of the taxes deducted from the source um, for the dividends paid. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with regards to the statements. If I can go into the net asset value, you will see the time weighted rate of return as 25.6 euro. Uh, so that is the interactive brokers account um, and also the rough total mark to market and all those things. Okay, so this is my second uh, portfolio personal account and that is $18,000. The previous one was like 35,000 roughly dollars. Uh, so there, there's a massive position in Alphabet. It's $11,000 and Amazon is $7,000. That's on top of the Amazon uh, bull call spread that I recently purchased. Uh, so if I can go deep into the position details. So I bought Amazon uh, at 100 and 30, 45 positions. Now, check out this commission. So that's like 30 US dollars just to open the position. So that's how big of a commission the local bank charges. Uh, it's massive. Um, same thing goes for Amazon as well. So, so far in Alphabet, I've got a 96% profit and then Amazon is 70%. Hopefully this will turn around. And if I can go through the performance, <clears throat> let's do one year performance. Uh, so we can compare apples to apples. So, so far in that period, it's 36.58% and S&P 500 is 14 point something as we saw before. Um, yeah, so that is the performance in my second personal account. Um, 
so there you go that's the overall uh, performance of both these accounts okay i'll also show my current positions in the interactive brokers again going into the portfolio so you can see the positions and the unrealized profit and losses so you can see nvidia uh, is the largest position and then there's Microsoft HCA uh, there's the Amazon bull spread which I am negative at the moment uh, negative 4.19 percent but I have two years for this to work out um, and you can see the positions on the lower end that's the um, uh, recent positions which I took in that's in the uh, Salesforce and the Fortnite and uh, Permapipe holdings uh, so those things are some of the uh, mean reverting strategies so those stocks if I can go into the chart um, had a big down move and then the machine learning model essentially uh, signaled an entry and that was a CRM and then the Fortnite also the same thing you know like a massive down move and then I purchased it if I can go back um, the average price I bought it was for $79 so I bought it somewhere here and I also had um, perma pipe holdings as well so this is also had a big down move and then i uh, bought it at 25 something and now it's like uh, 27 something like that so uh, these are some of the positions again these positions are bound to change so don't just take these positions and start uh, investing uh, just like that these are only some of the positions and these keeps on changing okay so the additional thing i want you to show is that the leverage that i was talking about so you can see i have a usd cash of minus 1.53 so that's 1500 something uh, that's on a total capital of 35,000, so that's like 0 0.04 so i've taken a leverage of 1.04 so that's how tiny of a leverage it is and if you're adding the other personal account as well so that 35 plus 18 that will be roughly 53,000 or something uh, and then leverage on that of minus 1.53 will be something around like 1.02, 1.03 close. So that's how much leverage I generally take. My leverage is like so tiny, it doesn't make any significant difference. And that's pretty much the reason why my account is kind of protected from much of down moves, because I really believe in protecting uh, the funds rather than just making outright huge amount of returns. And I'm pretty sure people who make twos to one or threes on leverage can make 50% return, 75% returns, or even 100% return if you did four is to on leverage on this exact same strategy that I approach. But I don't think like that. For me, it's more in the perspective of I need to protect my portfolio. I need it for my own peace of mind. I need to sleep well at night. Always take all these things that you just saw uh, purely from a perspective of research. And if you want, you can add it into your uh, approach as well, but always do due diligence. Uh, if you want to check out the 2024 performance, uh, you can watch this uh, uh, I let AI trade my money for a year. Uh, this is what happened and the 2023 performance for this video as well. And you will see those uh, in the um, 352 that time space as well. Uh, okay, so hope you enjoy the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or doubts on what I discussed and uh, I'm happy to uh, share my response. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.